Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Death Knights in Shadowlands. Given that we're heading into the realm of death, you shouldn't be surprised to hear that DKs are looking up to be incredibly strong going into Shadowlands. Currently, both Unholy and Frost DKs are performing well. So in this video, we've paired up with Cervantes, one of Europe's best DKs, and Valido, one of North America's best DKs, to explain the differences between both specs while also covering all the basics to help you get started with your own Unholy and Frost DKs the moment Season 1 of Shadowlands begins. We'll be taking a look at the best races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. We'll also be releasing a refresher guide when Season 1 starts that will cover any outdated information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment those guides are out. To get things started, let's discuss the changes that DKs have seen from BFA. The class as a whole has received a few talents as baseline abilities, the most important being a slightly weaker version of AMZ, which can be made stronger with a PvP talent and Lichborn, which now acts as a charm, fear, and sleep immunity by turning you undead, returning the ability to death coil yourself for large self heals. Moving on to the specs, Unholy for the most part remains the same, with even the loss of Azerite traits being up for as Magus of the Dead has become a part of a new talent, Army of the Damned. Hell Chains has also been turned into a talent Unholy Pact that includes a strength increase. Besides those changes, the spec mostly remains the same, being mostly about control with the inclusion of a pet stun and interrupt while outputting consistent single target pressure through Necrotic Strike and pet damage. Although it is worth noting that currently Necrotic Strike feels a bit underwhelming, which may push Unholy DKs towards a more front-loaded damage build by using talents like Clawing Shadows. Frost, on the other hand, has seen a very large, important change to how they deal damage, with the reintroduction of Two-Handed Frost via Might of the Frozen Wastes. This means that Frost DKs will no longer just rely on the damage from Chill Streak and Dot Damage, and are instead able to hit hard with Obliterate. This gives them more on-demand damage but lowers their runic power generation, making their playstyle slightly closer to that of an Arms Warrior. They've also received Frostworm's Fury as a baseline ability, making their AoE burst even more threatening. So, exactly how good are DKs right now? Well, both specs feel quite similar in strength to their BFA counterparts in Shadowlands, with Unholy lagging a little behind Frost. Frost's high burst and decent consistent damage paired with their above average tools for surviving makes them comparable to even the best melee. Unholy, on the other hand, has slightly more utility than Frost, while losing out on the kill potential that Frost brings given the lack of hard-hitting abilities. This leaves Unholy trailing slightly behind. However, it's definitely still good enough to have its place in the meta, especially when played in the right comps. And given everything that we've said so far, we believe DKs are shaping up to be rather balanced, with neither of their specs screaming out that they need to be buffed or nerfed. They both have their place and are both better suited to different styles of comps, with Unholy DKs enjoying a more controlled approach in longer dampening games, and Frost DKs excelling in fast-paced matchups. So all that's needed is a few tweaks to the other classes that are overperforming, and DKs will definitely see strong performances in Shadowlands. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Alright, now that you're caught up on where DKs stand in the Shadowlands meta, let's go over everything you need to know to get started with your own DKs, starting with the best race. Regardless of your spec, Human stands out as the best alliance race. Will to survive means that you have the option of playing without a Gladiator's Medallion. You can then pick up Relentless for matchups with Heavy CC, an emblem for the additional defensive cooldown, or even two offensive PvP trinkets to deal more damage. You also get the added bonus of the Human Spirit for more secondary traits. If you're looking to be off meta though, you've got a few options. Gnome increases your mobility thanks to Escape Artist. Dwarf and Dark Iron Dwarf is also a competitive pick, and given the strength of the priest spell mind games, is definitely a contender for the best alliance race. As for Horde, Orc is the clear winner here. The passive stun reduction from hardiness coupled with the increase to your damage from Blood Fury makes this a very strong race in PvP. And if you're looking for an off-meta Horde pick, Blood Elf is the only one that could see some use with Arcane Torrent giving you an offensive dispel, but overall this pales in comparison to what Orc offers. Next up, let's take a look at your best talent builds for both specs, starting with Unholy. In the first row, all three talents are viable, depending on the build that you choose to go with. Due to Necrotic Strike feeling weak at the moment, Unholy DKs may opt to use Clawing Shadows as their main ability for consuming their Festering Wound Stacks. 
However, if we see a return to Necrotic Strike as the optimal playstyle, both Infected Claws and All Will Serve have their place depending on the matchup. Infected Claws is the go-to when facing melee cleaves and casters with low mobility, basically whenever your pet will have high uptime. This is the best choice for the additional Festering Wounds applications that let you Necrotic Strike more often. In matchups where you're likely to be kited and your pet won't have as much uptime, All Will Serve will give you more damage. In the level 25 row, Cervantes prefers to use Unholy Blight as part of the Klein Shadows build because he feels it's a strong offensive cooldown that you can use for some added burst damage, whereas Valido prefers Bursting Source to deal slightly more damage with Necrotic Strike while also slightly increasing its absorb effect. Moving down into the level 30 row, Asphyxiate is the obvious choice for access to a ranged stunt, playing into the narrative of controlling the enemy team. Next, in the level 35 row, both Harbinger of Doom and Soul Reaper are viable picks. With Cervantes leaning toward the Harbinger of Doom for more consistent damage with the Klein Shadow build, and Valido preferring Soul Reaper for access to an additional offensive cooldown when using Necrotic Strike. Moving down into the level 40 row, Wraithwalk can be beneficial in most matchups for the added mobility. However, Spell Eater is generally a must when facing casters if you expect to be targeted. So expect to switch between both talents depending on the matchup and how you expect the enemy team to play. The level 45 row sees our first important change from BFA with the introduction of the previously mentioned Unholy Pact. While the Hell Chain's effect that's been pacted into this ability provides you with a decent bit of damage, it's mostly the strength increase that makes this talent so good. And the last talent again is dependent on your build with Army of the Damned, pairing well with the PvP talent Necromancer's Bargain to increase your burst potential via Crypt Fever when playing the Klein Shadows build. However, if you're playing with Necrotic Strike, You'll want to pick up Unholy Assault to frequently allow you to spam out plenty of necrotic strikes in a short amount of time to generate pressure. As for your PvP talents, if you want to use the Necrotic Strike build, you'll take it to every matchup. Otherwise, you'll want to pick up Necromancer's Bargain, which as we just mentioned will be paired with Army of the Damned. Your other two slots can be set to Raise Abomination for an additional offensive CD and Dome of Ancient Shadow to make your AMZ stronger against casters. You can then swap these two around with Dark Simulacrum against Mages and Warlocks to copy Polymorph and Fear if your main goal is to win with CC. Alternatively, you can pick up Necrotic or Decomposing Aura if you want more offensive pressure. Altogether, this leaves your default talent build for Unholy looking like one of these two, depending on the playstyle you choose. Again, our updated DK guide when Season 1 of Shadowlands starts will specify which build is looking to be more competitive so you know exactly what to play when the time comes. Alright, that covers the best Unholy talents. Next, let's go over the Frost ones. The first row sees Inexorable Assault as the best choice, as it provides you with the most impactful damage in PvP by increasing your Obliterate damage. Although, the return of Two-Handed Frost means that Icy Talons may also prove to be a strong pick, given how slow your attack speed is with a two-handed weapon. This may result in this tier being largely up to personal preference, but we'll have a more solid answer on this in our updated DK guide when Season 1 starts. Next, in the level 25 row, Runic Attenuation is a great pick for the runic power generation, something that Frost can struggle with, allowing you to deal more consistent damage. But if you do prefer to increase your rune generation instead to get out more obliterates, murderous efficiency can be considered, although it's worth mentioning that one of your legendaries does help a lot with rune generation. You'll then need to pick up Blinding Sleet in the level 30 row as it's an integral part of your chill streak kill attempts. You do this by using Death Grip to get two to three players on top of each other, and then use Blinding Sleet to give your team time to set up an AoE stun, which lets you use chill streak on multiple targets. The level 35 row is again just about getting the most consistent damage, with Frozen Pulse providing the most damage in a PvP setting. In the level 40 row, Wraithwalk is generally the best pick for most matchups, giving you access to some much needed mobility, one of the aspects that DKs generally lack in. Still though, Permafrost is a decent pick into melee cleaves where the mobility from Wraithwalk won't be necessarily needed. In the level 45 row, Gathering Storm is the best choice and plays a pivotal role in how you approach your damage rotation. With this talent, you're able to both increase the damage of your Remorseless Winner while also extending its duration by using up all of your runes. A great tip here is to line up your Empower Rune Weapon with Remorseless Winner whenever you want to deal as much AoE damage as possible to significantly increase its duration and keep the damage rolling. And your final talent in the level 50 row should be Ice Cap. This simply gives you more frequent access to your major offensive cooldown, Pillar of Frost. Obliteration is a decent alternative if you prefer to increase the strength of your Pillar of Frost as opposed to having access to it more often. As for your PvP talents, the staple trio from BFA of Chillstreak, Heartstop Aura and Delirium can be taken to most matchups. 
However, you should only take Delirium against classes with mobility that you want to nerf, so mages, monks, etc. The other talents that you'll want to consider picking up are Dome of Ancient Shadows against casters. Necrotic Aura is also a viable pick if you have a free slot for the damage increase. And finally, Dark Simulacrum is the same as it was for Unholy, being good into Warlocks and Mages if you want to copy their CC. Okay, so you've now hit max level and you've got the right set of talents. What's next? Well, if you've been around since Legion, you'll be very familiar with the term Borrowed Power, which is set to continue into Shadowlands. You'll need to start by choosing the best Covenant for your class, which will give you access to two abilities among a whole host of other perks that we'll cover after this section. Currently, we're recommending the Necrolords as the best Covenant for Death Knights. This allows you to essentially deny enemy mobility by gripping them back on top of you. And despite the recent nerf to prevent it from constantly triggering on the same enemy, it remains an excellent tool and complements a Death Knight's lack of mobility quite well. You'll also get Fleshcraft as an added bonus, which allows you to absorb some damage while also giving you outplay potential to immune CC if you pick up the Soulbind ability, Ultimate Form. And speaking of Soulbind abilities, after selecting your Covenant, you'll unlock Soulbinds which are essentially skill trees that you'll be progressing through as you journey through Shadowlands. We recommend using Plague Divisor Merolith as your Soulbind for competitive PvP as you gain access to that Soulbind ability that we mentioned earlier, Ultimate Form. This allows you to immune incoming CC while channeling your Fleshcraft and for 4 seconds afterwards if you complete the entire channel. This gives you the opportunity to make some great plays, but isn't the main reason why you're picking up this Covenant. Abomination Limb is. Alright, so you've set Plague Divisor Merilith as your Soulbind, but you're not done yet. You'll also need to pick up a bunch of Conduits which are split up into three different categories, Endurance, Potency, and Finesse. Now, depending on the Soulbind that you choose and the path that you take through the Soulbind abilities, you'll gain access to a different combination of Conduit types. Our recommended path through Merilith sees you choose from two Potency, one Finesse, and one Endurance Conduit. Starting with your Endurance Conduits, you'll get the most value out of Insatiable Appetite. While both Hardened Bones and Reinforced Shell are good, they both rely on a cooldown, which means you get less value out of them in the long run. Next, Chilled Resilience stands out as the best Endurance Conduit. While Spirit Drain could be considered for some Runic Generation, it really doesn't compare reducing the cooldown of your strongest defensive. And last up, your Potency Conduits will differ depending on your spec. Both DK specs will want to consider picking up Brutal Grasp, which increases the damage of the Necrolord ability Abomination Limp. Unholy DKs will then want to pick up Convocation of the Dead to lower the cooldown of Apocalypse. Then, playing without Brutal Grasp, Embrace Death is another good Potency Conduit, which gives a passive increase to the damage of your Death Coil procs. You may also want to consider using Eternal Hunger to increase the duration of Dark Transformation, but we mostly recommend sticking to the first two. And finally, Frost DKs should be looking to use Biting Cold, which has excellent synergy with the Gathering Storm talent. Eradicating Blow is then your second best potency conduit, which you'll take if you're not using Brutal Grasp, and just works by passively increasing the damage of your Frost Strike when you use Obliterate. Although Accelerated Cold also looks good and could be considered as your second potency conduit. This leaves your optimal build for Unholy and Frost looking like this. Alright, the final step that you'll need to take is to pick up your best Legendary. Unholy and Frost DKs will need to pick up certain Legendaries, although the best Unholy Legendary doesn't really have a large impact on gameplay, meaning you could easily get away with playing without one for a while. It's also worth noting that because we're ranking Frost above Unholy, we suggest picking up your best Frost Legendary first. Kultira's Favor is currently quite far ahead of your other options, as it both increases the damage of your main source of damage while also giving you a chance to refund your runes, letting you use Obliterate even more. Frost DKs also have another option that has some potential in Biting Cold. This is based on the Azerite power from BFA, Frozen Tempest, and makes Remorseless Winter an even stronger CD, potentially giving you more burst damage given that you're also using the potency conduit of the same name, Biting Cold, and the talent Gathering Storm. As for Unholy, Frenzied Monstrosity seems to be your best one, although really doesn't provide as much impact as the Frost Legendary. With that being said, it does have great synergy with the talent Unholy Pact, and essentially makes your Dark Transformation a much stronger CD. Alright everyone, that concludes our first look at Death Knights in Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need to get started in Season 1, and be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include updates to the information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.